So that polar grid, what it's doing is it's creating a two-dimensional polar array of planar points, right? So if, for instance, you wanted to um, do something where you were populating a grid with elements and it was in a um, two-dimensional uh, array um, where everything is planar, you can use either of those to your advantage very easily. Now, to take a look at what the differences are between those in terms of um, how they might operate, um, we really need to actually fill them in with something, right? So that's that step two of the process, which is working with grids, creating grids, um, or rather referencing geometry, creating grids, and then ultimately paneling that grid um, with some design element. Now, the important things to understand before we transition into um, paneling those, uh, the grids that we have is understanding that a unit grid consists of four points that enclose the unit grid space. And so when we saw that zero to one, zero to one, that's really important because the one is indicating increment, right? It's how much you are stepping over every step of the way. So you go from zero, you go to one. And from one, you go to two, and two to three, and so forth, right? Now the grid base point is the point of the grid which has the lowest row and column index values. So when we bounced over here into Rhino and we said, all right, well let's take a look at baking this. Well, this collection of points, right, they all have names. And if I go to my object properties, and I select the point, I'll see its name, 2-2. Two, two. Then over here we have 1-1, one, one, right? So over here we should have 0-1. So down here we have 0-0. Zero, zero. And that 0-0 zero, zero indicates that is the origin of the grid. And that makes sense because this point here was used as the base point. Okay, so the, the grid grew out from that point. Now, each point object is named to reflect its location in the grid. So the grid is structured as a 2D matrix of rows and columns. And the position is reflected within the naming convention of every point in the grid. And this is how things are connected. This is how you're able to then panel. So before we move into paneling a 2D motif, um, I'd love to address any questions that you may have um, that deal with you know the issue of grids because this is a little bit um, different than let's say the way that you've probably worked with grids in the past whenever you're just relying on the conventions of x y and z for instance these points in the grid do have x y z coordinates but tacked onto that coordinate um, is its specific name the first uh, value in the name or variable in the name is the grid name the second, the row position, and the third being its position uh, in the columns. Yeah, so somebody asked, is there a way to display um, in Grasshopper uh, the view of the names of these objects? So I was baking the um, grid and then looking at the grid name through object properties, but actually there is a way to do that. So. Um, from here, we could just bounce right over to uh, the paneling tools tab again and take a look at grid utility. Um, in grid utility, there is an object to extract the grid indices. All right, IJ. Right, so that's your counter. Right? That's the um, I and J that you see here, the row and the column. And if you take a grid in, you'll see that you can, for instance, um, let's just use this panel, see the current I value and J value right, for each one of those points. Now displaying that data in the Rhino environment is um, it's pretty straightforward. There's a little bit of finagling we have to do here, but not a big deal. So let's take a look. Under the vector tab, there is the sub tab point. 
And there is an object called text tag 3D. Um, this object allows you to display uh, data um, in the textual data in the viewport um, from wherever you want. So, for instance, if I wanted to take I and show I, and I want to put the letter, the current value of I at every point, I could do something like that. But I'm missing J, right? So I'm not telling the whole story here. So that's where it gets a little bit um, wonky. Um, in order to show both of them, you would actually need to go to sets and deal with strings. Uh, I and J is ultimately a string, right? And what we'd like to do is combine them. So you can see concatenate. So if I were to just concatenate I and J, you'll see we get something that looks like this, which is a little bit illegible. It's not that easy to see what's going on there. But the, kind of, the cool thing that you can do with um, strings is that instead of concatenating, for instance, I and J, you could use I comma. All right, so there's I comma, for instance, and just re then concatenate after that point. So you have your I comma and J. Now, luckily, there's this S value, which allows you to change the font size. So I'm just going to grab another number slider and bring this down. So here you can now see dynamically in a parametric fashion, right, what is the current IJ value for each of these points, um, which are part of the grid? So that was an excellent question. Um, you can see it right here. Fantastic. 